Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today, we're gonna figure out where, where you point this thing. All right, so I'm hoping this video is gonna be real short, to the point, that way you get it, because I'm gonna be honest, this is not really a hard thing to master. It's, it's really just one of those things that somebody's gonna have to tell you one day, and I'm telling you right now, and once you know it, you're gonna instantly be able to apply it to pretty much everything you're working on, okay? So without further ado, let's jump on over here and let's talk about how do we use our stinking hot air stations and how do we point them appropriately in a manner in which it doesn't damage the board. All right, all right. So let's just go ahead and take a worst case scenario here. You're working on an iPhone. These things are super dense, okay? You know, if you're, if you're taking, you know, some you know, galaxies here, you know, they're, they're all right, but they, they just don't feel as dense as an iPhone board. And the denser it gets, the more challenging it gets because you have to worry about other components being damaged in the process, okay? So let's take this example right here. We've got ourselves a little chippy chip right here, and we've got something special right next to it. We've got ourselves a processor, completely surrounded in underfill. This is this is a scary situation for some people. They just won't even do the repair. And I'll tell you, I don't really make these videos unless I'm seeing people either talk about the issues they're having or that I see the issues they're having. And I'll tell you, in the last two weeks, I've talked to five different people that have had issues with how and where they aim their hot air gun, okay? So let's go ahead and take it. Let's talk about these fundamentals real quick. First and foremost, there's different nozzles you can get. You can get nozzles that are bent. You can get little adapters that go on top or you can use a straight nozzle. It doesn't matter. You can get the job done with every single one of them. It's not that big of a deal, okay? But I will say that the flatter you have the nozzle directly over what you're working on and the closer you have it, the more dedicated energy is going right to, you, right to what you want and not anything else. So, you know, if the other kind of nozzles help you out, rock on, run it. They're not really for me. I don't really like them that much. So we're gonna focus on everybody else in the industry that just has a straight nozzle and wants to learn how to do this appropriately, okay? So we know that whatever you're working on needs to be you know, kind of in the center of your nozzle here, whatever size nozzle you decide to work with. Um, but the real key is how do we aim it at the board to not destroy everything? Okay, I'll tell you, I see a lot of people out there, and you know, don't forget your heat sink. You know, if you got something you're scared of, at least give it a little more thermal mass. Um, I see a lot of people out there that they say, okay, well, we're going to take this chip off right here. No big deal. I've done this all the time, but I will say sometimes I break some things. They don't know why. They jump on in, and they start heating it up. Okay, and you see I'm over here. I'm aiming directly at it. That's exactly what you said, right, Justin? Aim the hot air station to the center of whatever your component is. That's what you told me to do. But what I did not tell you to do was to completely saturate your board, okay? There's a lot of people that work on this left-handed method where they're aiming directly over, okay? And that's not always the best way to do things, okay? You want to direct the energy of what you're doing to the target component while at the same time kind of trying to evade all the other components, okay? That's the magic right there. You want to evade all the other components. So, okay, Justin, well, let's switch it around. Let's come from the front. You got it, right? Let's go ahead and just jump on in there. Let's heat it up. You said right in the middle, so that's what I'm doing. I got it right in the middle here. We're heating it up, but I'm still having issues because you you just haven't taught me right, Justin. You're, you're ruining my work. You're making things worse for me. But what did I just say? I said, I want you to avoid all the other components. Well, how do I do that, Justin? I'm right here, but you told me not to do it from this side. <sighs> Smarter, not harder. We're going to flip the board okay because before all the energy was going directly into the board everywhere around it but now now things have changed okay now things have changed for the better me personally i always like coming from the front i'm not really a side kind of person i feel like you know you end up burning your hand most of the time like that if you bring it from the front here you come over and let's avoid all the other stuff let's make sure we're properly heat synced here and uh you know i don't know if you can notice but uh, I'm aiming at the chip, and the rest of the energy is going out here. Hmm. Well, that really wasn't even that big a deal, Justin. You're stretching this video out, trying to make it as long as possible, and you know all you had to do was say, aim off the board. You're having trouble. Now you're not going to have trouble. It was that simple. Just 
avoid everything you can possibly, directly heat the component, but try and get that air to come off the board. Try not to, you know, come in there and aim directly at the CPU or, you know, something else you're working on that's really dangerous that you're scared of that you keep messing up. Avoid it all by avoiding the board. It's that simple. So anyway, I really hope you learned something today. I hope you took something away from this. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. I don't know how many other things we're supposed to do, but I, I mean, back in the day, you were just supposed to subscribe. It's getting really complicated now. Uh, or you can just check back every week if you want. I mean, it's up to you. But moral of the story is, I hope you learned something, and I hope you have a good day. Don't forget, guys, if you're interested in any of the tools I use, check out the description below. I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair. I also have a Patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high quality content.